Welcome to Talk of the Town. I'm your host, Rod Johnson. It's great to be back with you, and we've got a great program lined up for today. We're going to talk about the 145th anniversary of St. Ansgar's Church here in Cannon Falls, and uh, just delighted to have as our, our guest today, a Cannon Falls native, uh, Pastor Rod Anderson. Welcome. It's great to be here, coming back home, and uh, and looking forward to uh, sharing in this celebration for St. Ansgar's. It, it really sounds like it's going to be a lot of fun and uh, a lot of things happening. Before we talk about that, let's just, just get caught up on, on, on what you've been up to. And, uh, we, you and I were just talking about going to school in Cannon Falls, and I got a class reunion coming up. But uh, take us a little bit on, on, on your journey as, as you grew up in Cannon Falls and ended up in the ministry. Well, my 50th class reunion okay. is next year. So uh, my history in, uh, in, in the community uh, uh, had its birth in Spring Garden, okay. in Spring Garden Lutheran Church. And um, um, my family, uh, six boys, uh, and a uh, farm family. And, uh, and there in Spring Garden, a seed was planted in my heart uh, by, by uh, pastors, particularly by a grandfather who had moved to town and was a member at the time of St. Anne's really? Church in his, his retirement. And uh, so my ministry uh, has led me from being at the University of Minnesota, Luther Seminary in St. Paul. Um, then I served in Northeast Minneapolis for a short time, three years, my first call. And then 34 years at a mission congregation. And here's where I connect a little bit with uh, the subject of our conversation mm -hmm. today. Uh, it was a mission development uh, setting at St. Andrew Lutheran Church in Eden Prairie. Okay. And I served there for 34 years. It was a very, wow. very exciting, wonderful ministry environment to be in. And uh, following that, um, um, it was a kind of encore. I'm a little <laughs> sensitive about the word retire. Yeah. But as an encore, uh, I became interim senior chaplain at Gustavus Adolphus College for two years, and now I'm serving at the college part-time, again, as a kind of encore, as the uh, coordinator of the ambassador program in congregations. So it was really through that interim chaplaincy that I became reconnected with uh, Pastor Eric Norelius, who was founding pastor mm -hmm. of Spring Garden and a very strong influence as mission-developing pastor for uh, St. Ansgar's, 145 yeah. years ago. So you uh, you mentioned uh, some influences you had uh, back in the Spring Garden days and when you were younger. Was there one certain thing you mentioned a grandfather that all of a sudden it went? I want to get into the ministry, or was it you know over a period of time, or how did that work out? Well, my grandfather, uh, J. L. Anderson, people called him Leonard. It was John Leonard Anderson, and my grandma Ida uh, were um, lived in town. In fact, they lived, uh, uh, built a home uh, across the parking lot from the uh, original St. Ansgar's mm -hmm. site on Highway 19, right. closer into town. And um, when we would go and stay there, when we were showing calves at the Cannon Valley Fair, oh, yeah. we would stay overnight at Grandpa and Grandma's house, and, 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 and Grandpa did devotions at the breakfast table. And, I, you know, his voice... I mean, I thought God was talking, mm -hmm. you know, that influence. And, uh, and then when I was confirmed, he was the last to leave the reception at our house on the farm. And he looked me in the eye and he said, Now, Rodney, now that you know what God has done for you, what will you do for God? Wow. And then he said, You remember your promises, confirmation promises. Well, that worked Pretty well for a while. I started thinking about being in the ministry, and then I I got involved in speech and theater, and I, I went to the university, especially through a generous scholarship from the Cannon Falls schools, and and um, I thought I might be a speech teacher and a drama coach. Took my first five credit course as a freshman. Um, I got an A, and I said, "This is not for me." And that uh, shortly thereafter, my grandpa died. Mm. And I was back on track for the seminary. But I often say I got most of my theology on the seat of a John Deere. Yeah, there you go. Because round after round, <laughs> the seed goes in the ground, the sun, the rain, the harvest. you got a lot of time yep. to think out there. Mm -hmm. And um, there must be a God. This can't just happen. And, and, um, 
and, and that was that was the kind of experience I had that was kind of like Eric Norelius' experience, except he was driving a horse mm -hmm. and a screech cart, which meant wooden wheels, wooden axle, axles, and so that that cart, that wagon, was always screeching. Um, and, um, and he, he talks about that in some of his writings mm -hmm. and so forth. So. It's uh, interesting to, you know, think back and, and uh, you know, the influences like your grandfather and, and people have on others. So, oh, uh, yeah. you know, uh, boy, uh, thank goodness you went this path and it sounds like you've had a, a great career and it's not over yet. So, but yeah. you, you, you mentioned Eric Norelius and we're, we're going to talk again, as we, we mentioned, uh, September 28th is the 145th anniversary of St. Ansgar's Church. Now, Pastor Anderson, let's tie in Eric Norelius and St. Ansgar's and Spring Garden. What's, what's the connection there with, with, with Norelius? Well, I'm going to tell the story of Norelius' faith journey okay. from uh, Norbach, Sweden, in Holsingland, in the Hustle Parish, <laughs> uh, and uh, his coming to uh, the new country, to the frontier in 1855 and uh, beginning churches uh, in what was called the Swede Prairie. And he was a young man when he got oh, here, he right? Oh, was, he was a young man. He was in his early 20s. Okay. Uh, he actually left Sweden when he was 17. All right. And he, he got some education and some involvement down in the Indiana and Ohio area and uh, Illinois, and then, and then came here. Uh, and um, he gathered together... Um, Swedes at Vesa, or in Swedish, or in Sweden, you would say Vasa, mm -hmm. and uh, Red Wing, um, and then um, those were in 56, 57 was Cannon River, 58 was Spring Garden, my home church, uh, um, and um, now 70, or 69 was um, um, uh, St. Ansgar's. Mm -hmm. And so um, he was involved in, as a mission developer or um, in, responsible for the missionary efforts of the Augustana Synod uh, of the Lutheran Church, which was the, uh, the Swedish um, immigrant population that arrived here in, in thousands, 70,000, you know, coming okay. to Minnesota in those early years. It sounds like he did very well in setting up the churches. Was that typical in that day uh, in, and in different areas? Uh, uh, yes, and, and he he traveled in, you know extensively out into western Minnesota first, mm. um, up to St. Paul, out to western Minnesota. Later, at one point, went to Bismarck, um, became somewhat ill and had to return uh, to this area. Um, some of these things I'll talk about on that Sunday, but actually, at one point, took the train all the way out to the west coast, uh, to Washington, Oregon took a steamer named the Coos Bay down, Sacramento, San Jose, um, Monterey, went to Alcatraz, uh, and it was somewhat discouraged out in the, in the West getting mm -hmm. churches started. Um, but he also uh, had a great influence on the institutions, including college and, and um, social service work with those immigrants. What happened really was he went looking for wherever there was a Swedish settlement. Um, whenever he found a Swedish settlement, there he tried to gather the people together, and they were anxious to see him come, and he might do some baptisms that had okay. been waiting to happen, maybe some confirmations that you, you might imagine were almost homeschooled. Uh, and, uh, and then he tried to bring them together, form a congregation, and then try to find a pastor who could come and serve them. Now, was he himself a pastor at any of these churches, you know, for a length of time, or, or did he mainly line up other pastors to come? He, he, he could only be in one place yeah, at yeah, one time. Right, yeah. So he served in many congreg several congregations as pastor. Okay. Uh, he was actually called to Vesa Church five times. Wow. In other words, he would be off to some other effort, and then he, they'd want him to come back. He actually served at Spring Garden for two years okay. after having been in Bismarck. Um, and, uh, and he did a lot of work in forming the Synod. Uh, as I speak, I, 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 I speak as, uh, as I call it, Eric Norelius, first person. So I, I want to get into the person of Eric Norelius. I want to get into his 
character. I want to portray him in as I am able to, to kind of become him. And that's what you will do on the 28th, right? That's what I'll do as a part of this sermon. I'll, I'll bring out the gospel for the day, okay. which is about, you know, you know, by whose authority does this work get done is kind of the question that comes from the scriptures that day. Um, so I'll, I'll, it'll be a sermon, mm-hmm. but it'll be stories of ministry that, um, that illustrate, um, well, um, what, what I call one spirit, one church, one purpose that we have together. And that's the way he, he believed mm-hmm. and that's the way he did his work. And that's how these congregations were planted and, um, and how they flourished. You know, it's, uh, history is so, so important and uh, it's just great to, to, and important, I think, to look back and see how everything started. And, and back in those days, you know, 145 years ago, you, you mentioned the Swedish. And that, that was pretty, I mean, the Swedish would go to this church and, uh, you know, the Norwegians, they were on the other side of the road, right? <laughs> well, you know, if I can... Uh, if I can say it like I often do, I grew up uh, in Spring Garden on the north side of Goodyear County 9. And on the north side of Goodyear County 9 was the Swedes. Yep. And uh, you, would, you could take Goodyear County 9 all the way to Goodyear and down into Red Wing. And there on the north side of you know, those roads was the beginning of Gustavus Adolphus College. Okay. On the south side of Goodyear County 9 was the Norwegians. Mm-hmm. There would be Erland and and uh, congregations down to Kenyon and Wanamingo and so forth. And um, if you follow Goodyear County 9 out, out, we- out west and get to Northfield on the county road, you know, St. Olaf's kind of on the other side yeah, of the road yeah, there. That's right. And um, my dad, he, we were actually four miles from Wanamingo, uh, our farm place was, and longer than that to Cannon Falls, although we went to Cannon Falls schools. Mm-hmm. And my dad, he liked doing business in Wanamingo with the Norwegians because, as he said, he thought that was missionary work. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, um, and I, I sometimes have to explain how we ended up with all these different kinds of Lutheran churches. You know, it really wasn't that we disagreed about lots of things. It was more that, you know, my great-grandfather homesteaded that farm and they began to to gather together to worship, and they worshiped in the Swedish language as Lutherans. You know, across the road, as I said, you know, the, they, a few miles away, gathered together, farmers, and began to work, and Norwegian. Mm-hmm. And so it was with the Danes and the Finns and the Latvians and all those Northern Europeans and Scandinavians. They couldn't be one because they were worshiping in a different language. Mm-hmm. Now, that didn't happen in the Catholic Church. It didn't happen in the Baptist or the Methodist. They were worshiping in Latin in the Catholic Church, one language, um, even to kind of express the oneness of the church. Uh, and Methodists and, 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 and some of the others were more English speaking. So Lutherans ended up, and then we, they ended up divided. Then we had mergers mm-hmm. and more mergers. <laughs> and uh, and, and we, we got beyond that. But here in town, you can literally see that. Some churches would put English in their name, First First English English. Mm -hmm. Lutheran Church. While others would say Spring Garden, Swedish Evangelical Lutheran Church. The evangelical part, that's the missional -hmm. missional piece. So um, one was preserving the history and one was wanting to Americanize their families mm -hmm. and the community. Yeah, and it's interesting too how the churches come up with their names. Like Erland, I, I believe, was a town in Norway. I mm-hmm, think that's mm-hmm. how they got their name. Yeah. Um, and and yeah. St. Anskar yeah. was the, uh, the missionary who brought the Christian church to Sweden. Okay. And that was about, a, that was in the first millennium, just around the turn of the first, well now we're in the turn of the second millennium has turned, mm-hmm. we're looking past, so think about a thousand years ago. Wow. Yeah. So, Again, we're talking uh, with Pastor Rod Anderson here, and we're, we're talking, too, about the 145th anniversary of uh, St. Ansker's Lutheran Church, which is coming up on September 28th. What's, what's all going to happen that day? Kind of fill us in, on, and this is open to the public, anybody who wants mm-hmm. to come. Uh, it sounds like a very fun, interesting day. What, fill us in. Well, I, I know that they've uh, chosen to have one service that day, okay. um, 
probably to express the oneness mm -hmm. of the community. Even though uh, we have multiple services for different reasons, meets different people's needs and so forth. Um, so that'll be great at 1030, 1030. on Sunday morning, the 28th. Um, I, I often do, as Eric Norelius, a sermon and then maybe uh, uh, speak afterwards with a PowerPoint with lots of photos mm -hmm. and stuff. But we've decided this day that I get to speak a little bit longer. Okay. And I'll put it all into one package, the sermon. And so I'll, I'll have lots of pictures, um, PowerPoint images of the past and uh, church buildings and kind of some of these stories um, flesh out what we have. Uh, I hope we have some laughter because there's yeah. some good humor mm -hmm. in in, in Norelius. Will you dress the part too? And I will, I right. will dress. I'll wear the... Uh, the tabs, as they're called, and um, and share some of the research. I, I, I want to uh, I want to you know tell some of the Saint Anne Scar story mm -hmm. yeah. that um, is in the history books you pick up from them and right. other congregations that I might go and speak at, as well as uh, some of the writings of of Eric Norelius himself, uh, and um, you know uh, that uh, other congregations done more. Vase has you know yeah. got a well-known historical book called the the Vasa Illustrata. There you go. Uh, with lots of illustrations. So mm -hmm. I've tried to take some of those illustrations, put them into into the story. And then mm -hmm. after worship, um, and I know they're planning lots of music. I mean, all the musical Great. groups are going to have something mm -hmm. to contribute that will be very, very special about okay. the worship service. And then they're going to have a, a festival kind of okay. uh, meal and and um, it's lots always of good food, food too. And lots of great food, <laughs> yes, lots of great food. Yeah. Well, uh, sounds like a great day, and yeah. uh, looking forward to it again on uh, September 28th, 145th anniversary of St. Ansker's, and uh, looking forward to it. And we hope uh, we hope a lot of people can make it out that day. I hope to see many friends, yeah, from mm -hmm. the past, and uh, and um, new people as well yeah. who want to uh, discover a little bit more about. Um, St. Ansgar's and the wider community, the, 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 the community and even the, the wider area, which was in the old days called Swede Prairie. By Swede Sonic. Prairie. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Well, thank you for taking the time to, to come in and kind of fill us in on this. And uh, it's been very interesting and it's really good to see you again. Thank you so much. Good to see you, Rod. All right. Again, our guest has been uh, Pastor Rod Anderson. You can see him as Eric Norelius on September 28th. The St. Ansgar celebrates their 145th anniversary. Public is invited. It's going to be a great day, so we hope you can make it there. Uh, that'll wrap it up for this edition of Talk of the Town. Hope you've enjoyed it. Again, if anybody has ideas or suggestions on, on other things we might do on this show, we're, we're all for that. Just let us know. That'll wrap it up. Talk of the Town. I'm Rod Johnson, your host. And I think even you know teachers and everybody's kind of ready to go back to, to back at it, don't right. you think? I I 100% agree yeah. with that. My yeah. own two children. Where were you at in your life, and when did it occur to you that that you wanted to pursue uh, law enforcement as a career? You know, I growing up, I kind of thought, you know, maybe.